guys welcome back to another swift video in today's video we're going to be looking at how you can add custom cells to a table view fully programmatically so no storyboard no outlets none, none of that we're going to build what you see here basically a cell with a, a switch in it a label and this image we're going to talk about how to lay out all of your views so everything looks appropriate uh, and things can lay out properly we're also going to talk about how to pass in and configure each cell with custom data. So here you can see we've got the image alternating uh, and we're passing in the uh, position of each row. So basically like if you have an app like Instagram with uh, elaborate table and collection views, you can pass in models to configure each of them to look different. And uh, most importantly, you can do all this through code. So no nibs, no storyboard, none of that. Make sure you destroy the like button as always. Uh, hit subscribe while you're at it if you have been following and enjoy the content. Get Xcode ready and let's jump into it. All right, so we're gonna get started by opening up Xcode and creating a new project. We'll stick with a single view application and I'm gonna go ahead and call this custom cells, no storyboard. Make sure you've got this set to uh, Swift. It's an important thing we care about. And let me go ahead and save this. And first and foremost, let's select a simulator up here. We can just keep this one, hit that run button to build and run. And we can also go ahead and close the attribute inspector here since we're gonna do everything in code. And uh, there we have our simulator launched up and we are good to go. So we're gonna first go into the view controller and simply add a table view uh, that we need. And then after that, we can start creating our cells. So I'm gonna create a table view with a anonymous closure. Uh, if you've been watching my videos, you know that I like this pattern, I advocate for it. So we're gonna use this same pattern here. So table view, and we're gonna instantiate it right here. And then we'll return said table view. Don't forget to put your parentheses right there. And I'm simply gonna first register a base class table view cell. So whenever you do uh, any custom cell, you need to register it. And in this case, we're going to be using just the class and no nib files. So you're going to register the class of the table view uh, cell that you want to use and give it an ID. So we'll just give a cell for now. And then here we want to make sure we add a sub view. So we're going to say add sub view table view. And then we want to override view did layout sub views. And this is where we can assign a frame to the table view. And we're gonna have this be the entirety of the screen. And before I assign the data source and get into the weeds of that, let's just uh, give this guy a background color of, uh, let's say link, which is a blue, hit that run button and let's make sure it shows up. Okay, awesome. So we've definitely got our table showing up. Uh, we can see these very subtle lines um, for the separator, but we don't have any cells. So. Uh, we have registered this basic cell here. So let me go ahead and just implement the data source. And then we're gonna uh, basically customize the cell and make our own in code. So we need to start by implementing the table view data source. And it's gonna basically yell at us and say we haven't conformed to it yet. So we're gonna extend the view controller with a UI table view data source. And in here we need to implement two functions. So the first one is number of rows which tells a table view how many rows it needs to uh, deal with in a given section. And the next one is cell for row at index path. And in this one, we're gonna dequeue a cell uh, based on the ID that we have registered. So that is cell and this string is coming from up here. We registered a basic UI table view cell with a string of cell. And we're gonna put a comma, we're gonna say for index path, and down here, we can simply return the cell. And a basic table view cell has a text label on it. So I'm simply going to uh, assign this to be hello world. Go ahead and hit run. And we should now see 10 cells uh, with hello world in it. Awesome. So let me uh, actually get rid of this background color as well. Now that we know that we have this showing up. And let's start talking about custom cells. So to create a custom cell, we're gonna want to come over here and hit right click, new file. It's gonna be a Cocoa Touch class. And basically you wanna create a subclass of a UI table view cell. Make sure it's in Swift. We're no, not dealing with Objective-C and make sure this stays unchecked. So no nib file. So we're gonna call this custom table view cell. 
go ahead and hit enter twice to create it. And the very first thing we want to do in here is get rid of all this template code. We're going to write our own code. So every table view style needs to be registered to the table. And usually you use a string to do that um, for the identifier. And it's good practice to put that identifier uh, in the class that you're going to register. So I like to do it like this. And you'll see in a moment how uh, we actually use this. The next thing we want to do is override the initializer, which is init with style and reuse identifier. And this is the initializer that the table view internally will call to uh, instantiate and dequeue the cell. Make sure you call super, passing in style and the reuse identifier. And let me just go ahead and set this guy's content view background color to be orange. So every single table view cell has a content view where your subviews in the cell should go. You can add subviews directly to the cell, or you can set the background color directly as well. However, you should always work in the content view since this is actually going to take care of some of the overflow margins and padding and all that good stuff. So um, the other error we're seeing here is it wants us to bring in this required uh, coder initializer. So you can just hit the error and hit fix. Whoops, I think I missed it there. Go ahead and hit fix and it will stub it out for you. And that's all you need to do with this. You don't need to implement this. You don't need to worry about it. Um, so before we start adding some subviews, let's go back to our view controller. And in here, we want to register our custom cell now. So that's going to be our custom table view cell dot self. So this class, and we're going to say custom table view cell dot identifier. And this is basically that static property we added right in here. And what's cool about this is uh, sometimes we may, people make mistakes uh, writing out strings. So to avoid typos, you can just create a property and use that uh, in a type safe manner. And then down here, you can DQ again using that identifier like so. And let's go ahead and get rid of this text label assignment. And let's hit that run button. And let's make sure we're seeing our custom cell with the given color. Okay, awesome. Orange, we're seeing it. So now we want to add custom views to this. So for example, let's say we want to add uh, a switch, an image, and a label. So for images, what I'm going to do is I grab two cat images from Google Images. I'm going to go to my XE assets and bring them in. So we're going to, whoops, we're going to right click in here and create two image sets. First one is going to be a cat one. Next one is a cat two. And just simply go ahead and drag these. Whoops, let's do them one at a time. Go ahead and drag this first one in. Uh, and you can use any image for that matter. This is just an example. So drag those guys in and let's go back to our cell. So how do we create subviews in here? Well, it's pretty simple. You do it the exact same way you would do it on any other view or view controller. And it's exactly the way we did our table. So the first thing we want to do is create a switch. So we can't just use the word switch since it's a keyword. So I'm going to call it underscore switch. And this is going to be a UI switch. And we're going to create it again with the anonymous closure. So I'm going to say switch is UI switch. And I'm going to say switch dot tint color is let's go with blue. And we're going to say switch dot is on is true. And finally, we need to return the switch. Now that we have the switch, we want to add it as a sub view. So again, we can do that in the initializer. So content view, add sub view, the switch. Now we need to implement one other function, which is extremely important, rather two other functions. And the first one uh, that we're going to talk about is called layout subviews. And we're going to override this. And this function is a function on any type of UI view. And first and foremost, go ahead and call super.layoutsubviews. So this function is called when the view is basically going to ask, how do you want to lay out all of your subviews? So this is where we're going to go ahead and assign the frames for all of our subviews. So we only have a switch right now. So we're going to assign it CG rect with an X, Y width and height. And one thing you might be wondering is, well, how do we know what the height is? So a lot of this layout is done uh, relative. So the X we can say is five from the left. The Y we can say is five from the top. The width we can give it this, give this an arbitrary number of let's say a hundred. And the height you can say content view dot frame dot size dot height. So whatever the container's height is, subtracting, uh, we actually don't need to even subtract, let's see, we do need to subtract 10. The reason we need to subtract 10 is so it's centered vertically since we're five from the top. We also want to be five from the bottom. 
So go ahead and hit run and let's see if our switch shows up. Okay, perfect. So our switch is now showing up. Um, it's the green color. So I think with the other, the color that we want to change is, uh, there's another color property on here. It's called on tint color. So go ahead and change that. So it should be blue, which is more visible. Perfect. And even if you rotate your device, you can notice uh, by hitting command left, right arrow, that everything in the actual layout stays the same and it looks appropriate. And let's, uh, let's go ahead and start adding uh, two more subviews just so we can see our uh, example here. So we're gonna first add a uh, image view and a label. So the image view is going to be a UI image view like that. Go ahead and create it. We're gonna go ahead and change this name so it's not misleading. And then this one is gonna be a label. So let's go make this a label, make this a label, label, and make this a label. We'll also say the text color here is going to be white. And let's also change the font to be a little more uh, visible. We'll give it a size, let's say 17 and a weight of bold. And once again, we wanna add the sub view. So we're gonna say content view, add sub view, my label, content view, add sub view, my image view. And then we want to assign these guys frames. So we're gonna have the image view be, uh, let's actually do it on the rightmost of the cell rather than on the left, uh, of, on the right of the switch. So we're gonna first do the label next. So we're gonna say my label dot frame is CG rect x, y width and height. Uh, we'll say y is zero. We're gonna say height is content view dot frame dot size dot height. X is going to be 10. We're gonna leave basically the five that the switch was using on the left as well as a five buffer from the switch itself. And this is gonna be switch dot frame dot size dot width. And let's see, the width of this is going to be the entirety of the content view, subtracting 10, subtracting the switch width, and then also subtracting the width of the image view that we're gonna add. So the width of the image view, uh, we're gonna call this image width. And image width, we're gonna define right up here. Now we're gonna show our image always as a square. So a square obviously has uh, equal proportional sides. And the square is basically gonna be derived by the height of the cell. So we're gonna say this is content view frame dot size dot height, uh, subtracting, let's say uh, six. And for the image view, let's go ahead and do that while we're at it here. We are going to say the frame of this guy is also X, Y width and heights. This is gonna be three. This is gonna be image height. Uh, we could just make it image size actually, so it's less misleading. Let's make that image size. The width and height will both be image size. Make sure you go ahead and change image size here. And the X is going to be content view dot frame dot size dot width subtracting image size. So I know these calculations are a little bit of mental gymnastics. So bear with me while we run it in just a moment. But before we do that, let's go ahead and assign an image to our image view here. We're gonna say this is image named cat one. And we're also gonna say image uh, uh, content mode is scale aspect fill. So the image fills up the image view. And let's also set a label to this. We'll call this custom cell, hit command B, hit command R, and let's see what that looks like. Okay, beautiful. So we see we've got our cat here. It looks like it's actually overflowing our cell. So that is not what we want. So what we want to do on this image view is actually say image view, clips to bounds. Oops, image view, clips to bounds is true like so. And now we can see that our uh, cat is showing up here, our label is showing up here, but just because the label ends here, don't be fooled. The actual label frame is the entirety of the width here. 
And what's really cool is all of this sizing is uh, relative to the containing size of the cell. So if we go to the view controller and override the function height for row, and we need to implement the delegate to actually do that. So let's go ahead and assign the delegate. And let's also conform to the delegate down here. We're gonna change up the size of each uh, cell height. So we're gonna say uh, height for row at index path. Let's just start by returning 100. And let's see that image view grow in size. So we'll see the image view is still square, but now uh, the label is actually still taking up the proper size. Now our switch looks a little off, right? So if we wanted to fix up our switch, what we would do is here, we're gonna say the Y of the switch should basically be uh, the appropriate size. So let's say we wanted to size the switch first. We're gonna say switch size is switch size that fits content view dot frame dot size now off of this we can say the width is still a uh, hundred and we're gonna say this is switch size dot height and we could actually make this switch size dot width and the y is going to be content view frame size height subtracting the height of the switch over two hit run and let's see what that looks like. Now you can see our switch is centered. So once again, mental gymnastics of actually calculating these numbers here. Uh, once you start doing it more so, it becomes far simpler. The cool thing about this is you have very, very nitty gritty control uh, through code of your UI versus using a storyboard. And the very last thing I wanna show uh, is how, how would you configure each cell in a dynamic way? So right now we're just assigning the properties directly for the image view and the um, actual label text. So you basically wanna pass in a model to do this, but I'm gonna do it in a quick way since this video is getting long. So you'd have one function on here called uh, configure, and I'll just call this text and image name for now. You should pass in a model instead of the properties directly. And then here we can say self.mylabel. We actually don't even need self there. And the text will be text. And the my image view dot image is UI image named. And we're gonna pass in that image name uh, in here, like so. And the other thing which is good practice to implement when you're doing this through code is prepare for reuse. And in here, you simply want to nil out the properties that will be changing between different cells. In that case, whoops, in that case, it's the text for us and the image view image. So go ahead and hit that and do nil and nil over here as well. And now in our uh, view controller, what we can do in here, we wanna first cast the cell. And if it fails to cast, we'll return a UI table view cell, like a standard one. And now we can say cell.configure with, uh, we'll just say custom, and we're gonna append in here the current row. And the image name, uh, we're gonna say, uh, if the current row is even, then we're gonna say it is cat one, otherwise it is cat two. So go ahead and hit run, and let's see what that looks like. Let's actually, looks like we've got an error here, return cell, value of optional type, let's see, this should be a guard, so it's not optional. This, we can drop the question mark and hit run once more. Should compile now, and as you can see now, we're passing in different values and our cell is being configured in a different way for each of the cells based on the data we pass. Similarly, we're passing uh, alternating image names because we're saying even cells pass one, otherwise pass another. Uh, and that's, that's basically it. That's how you can create a custom cell through code, no storyboard, no constraints, no outlets. And uh, I personally enjoy it way more. This is how uh, views are built at some of the largest tech companies, uh, Google, Facebook, Apple. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't destroyed the like button already, make sure to do so. Hit subscribe while you're at it for daily Swift videos. Comment any questions down below, errors. Uh, if you just want to say hi, thank you so much for watching. I will catch you in the next one.